The Royal Australian Air Force is a small but very capable force operating some of the latest and most technologically advanced aircraft in the world. This includes three combat squadrons of F-35A Lightning II fifth generation strike fighters which will remain in service for many years with the last of them arriving in December 2024. These are augmented by F-A-18F Super Hornets and E-A-18G Growlers with F-A-18Fs due to be replaced in the mid-2030s. What manned fast jet capability will the Australian Air Force need from the 2030s to remain at the leading edge of technology? More of the same or a move to the next generation? What options are there for the Air Force to replace the Super Hornets and Growlers? G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, Australia's next combat aircraft. What and when? This briefing will look at the likely candidates for Australia's next manned fighter strike aircraft acquisition and when that might happen. At the end of the briefing, I'll link two videos I think will be of interest. A shout out to members, uh, please send me a PM, and thank you to all those who have subscribed. I've just moved to a new city, so still getting set up. Australia acquired 24 two-seat F-A-18Fs, initially as an interim replacement for the ageing F-111s, with the aircraft becoming operational in 2010. The F-A-18F was an interesting choice given the F-111's key attribute was its speed and range payload performance, understandable for a long-range strike aircraft, something not displayed by the F-18Fs. Australia also acquired the two-seat EA-18G Growler electronic warfare aircraft, which became operational in 2017. The capabilities the Growler provides will also need to be replaced around the same time as the 18Fs. So whatever replaces the F-18Fs and EA-18Gs will need to be able to conduct fighter, strike and electronic warfare missions, preferably at long range without air refuelling. What are the possible next generation candidates for Australia? Well, the most obvious candidate is the US Air Force's F-47. The US is going full steam ahead with the F-47 with the aim of getting it into service as soon as possible. The US Air Force's Chief of Staff has stated the F-47 will have significantly longer range, be stealthier, be more sustainable and supportable, and have higher availability than the Air Force's F-22s and F-35s. The Chief of Staff also said it would cost less than the F-22, be acquired in larger numbers and be more adaptable to future threats. It is advertised as having a combat radius of more than 1,000 nautical miles or 1,850 kilometres, fly faster than Mark II and become operational in the mid-2030s. As yet, no designs have been released. Ideally, Australia would also like to be able to consider the US Navy's future NAXX, which may offer an ideal platform given it is to replace the FA-18Es, Fs and EA-18Gs in the US Navy. However, the FAXX program is likely now facing significant delays due to the focus of effort on the Air Force's F-47. Again, as yet, no designs have been released. The only other remotely possible options are the Tempest from a consortium including the UK, Italy and Japan, which is planned to enter service in 2035, and the Future Combat Air System from a consortium including Germany, France and Spain, with its design yet to be finalised. An important requirement for Australia should be the new aircraft's ability to carry weapons internally that are too large to be carried internally on the F-35A both air-to-air -air and air-to-surface missiles. The aircraft should be able to launch all weapons currently available to the Royal Australian Air Force's fast jet aircraft, together with the future AIM-260 and possibly the AIM-174B if it can be carried internally. But it is important to understand where the new aircraft fits into Air Force and broader ADF capabilities. It will be working closely with F-35As, a very capable aircraft, but limited by the size of weapons it can carry internally and by a decent but not spectacular combat radius. It will also be operating with loyal wingmen or collaborative combat aircraft, possibly the MQ-28 Ghostbat, controlling these expendable platforms. Does this mean that the new aircraft 
should be a two-seater. Whichever aircraft is selected, it will very likely be based at RAF Base Ambly near Brisbane, likely for deploying to RAF Base Tyndall near Catherine in the Northern Territory. In summary, the FA-18F replacement requires a better combat radius and the ability to carry larger weapons internally than the F-35, be at the cutting edge of technology, designed to work seamlessly with law wingman aircraft, and be available in the mid-2030s. Australia does not need more F-35s. It needs something new. At this stage, the Tempest appears further along than all but the F-47, with a planned entry into service in line with Australia's requirement. If it has the range payload performance of the F-47, it could be a strong contender. The other European candidate, the FCAS, however, has too many unknowns for it to be considered a likely candidate at this time. Of the US candidates, the Navy's FAXX would likely have been a very strong contender. Alas, it appears as though it won't be ready in time for Australia's decision. It seems as though only the F-47 would be able to meet the capability goals and replacement timeline for the FA-18Fs with any confidence. In terms of capability, its stated combat radius is a significant improvement over the F-35, and it would be surprising if its internal weapons bay was not larger than the F-35s, allowing it to carry larger weapons. We also note the US is expediting the program so it can enter service in the mid-2030s. As an aside, it would have been interesting to see a competition between the F-47 and the FAXX, perhaps in a similar way to the competition between the F-15 and F-14 in 1976 when Iran was looking for a new fighter. And a final note, unlike the FA-18F and EA-18Gs, the F-47 would use the flying boom refueling system, while the FAXX would use the Progan Drogue system. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share and don't forget to click the notification button so you don't miss the next briefing. You never know what it'll be about. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from members. Until next time, Fale de Cerro.